subversive and surreal radio program which influenced all subsequent British comedy from Monty Python to the comic strip. But he's also, in my opinion, an outstanding writer. I have long felt that his military memoirs are one of the most moving and important counts of the war, fit to rank with Evelyn Waugh's trilogy, Sword of Honour. I have been delighted by both Volume 5, Where Have All the Bullets Gone, which has just appeared in paperback, and Volume 6, Goodbye Soldier, which is published this week. Spike, one of the most... I ought to get out while the going's good, you know. <laughs> no, no, stay here for a moment. The finest teleprompt machine I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll try and do... Uh, well, uh, I'll wind myself up again. Um, the, the astonishing thing about your books is the clarity of your memory. Do you, is it true, or are you making it up as you go along? Well, no, you notice that I leave a, a large amount of photograph photographs in yeah. the book for this very reason, because a lot of people think I'm a bit scatty and it never really happened. So what I do, I back it up with photographs. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I usually do. I um, really feel it d does map sort of honour, because you know, you've got Evelyn Waugh kind of cursing the fact that the great England is passing away. Uh, and that's a very fine series of books. But then on the other hand, you've got your book saying, fantastic, that England's passing away. At last, we're going to get out. And you give a real sense of the kind of liberation that war brought to a large number of people in Britain. Well, it did. Uh, these guys, one day, there were nobody. Next day there were heroes and khaki and victors, and flags flying, bugles blowing, you know. That's what it was, a tremendous jump, you know. There's lots of guys now I know who never wanted to get in the war. I know guys who used to eat soap and pretend they got rabies or they wouldn't get into the army. And one guy appeared naked at a medical inspection and they passed him off as a very fine actor at A1. So they got in. A lot of these guys marching with banners uh, uh, suddenly only took over this, this heroism streak after the war when they realized, hey, we can march up and down with this stuff without being shot at, you know. Yeah. When better? Uh, but one of the things that kind of, in the conventional historical accounts of the war, that liberation, that way in which many of the kind of working class were, were really given a chance, uh, is linked to the um, election, the massive victory of the Labour government in 1945. It doesn't happen in your book. I mean, it doesn't seem of any importance. Was it not something that people thought well, about we at all? Well, we were in Italy with a lot of pretty girls and red wine and Vesuvius erupting. And who, who, who cared about this uh, clothes, this clothes hanger called Clem Attlee? I mean, Clem Attlee, who was he? I thought he was a dustman in Leeds somewhere. And I was wondering whether the, the point of comparison with Evelyn War was, in fact, a comparison rather than a contrast, because you, you obviously despised Attlee. You describe him very um, insultingly. Well, I've been coming out of, a, out of a hero's war with guys like Montgomery and Alexandra, people like Eisenhower, and suddenly this guy, you know, this make a joke out, and he came, so he got out of a taxi and nobody got out. <laughs> that sort of thing. I didn't recognize him as a leader. He never was a leader, really, though. He was a bureaucrat, very good bureaucrat, you know, but not that charisma you needed. From Churchill to Attlee, mm. well, it's like I'm going for finding Hitler in a synagogue. It just mm. doesn't work out, you know. Yeah. See here now, this, I'm an old fan of this guy. Yeah. I don't and know any older, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm several years older than you are, Spike. You're and I notice smiles that you haven't gone metric yet. Uh, well, uh, that, give, <laughs> give it time. We'll, we'll be getting around to that after this program's over. We'll discuss this later. But you see, this guy is not just witty, he's humorous. I mean, he has depth to him. And I read these books with fascination. A lot of the funniest parts, I didn't even smile at, but I kept reading. Mm -hmm. And I think he's one to be taken seriously. Not only does his uh, politics agree with mine, I gather, maybe unless I figured you out wrong. Do you believe the CIA didn't assassinate enough people to overthrow enough government? <laughs> well, that was the last item. Uh, that was the last item. <laughs> yes, right. Well, you feel that the CIA is after everybody. I mean, yeah. I get up every morning uh, and uh, look to the letterbox, see if anybody's there. <laughs> <laughs> well, can, can I, can I the y CIA is the YMCA of America, really, isn't it, really? There's no <laughs> See, you get it's a point. But you get bored see, and breakfast the there, you can say, look, I want you to shoot somebody, you can stay the night. Yeah. That's what the CIA is. <laughs> and yeah, nothing will come of it. Yeah. yeah. What, what about the ballerina? Oh, wow. Go into the ballerina. Oh, she was exquisite. I mean, she was so petite. Uh, uh, she was the prima ballerina at the Royal Opera Company of Rome, and I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> that was and, the draw. And I, we just fell in love. It, it was like a, I thought somebody was writing the story from Hollywood. I thought we're being run by some writer. It was, it was just too beautiful. Capri, I had lots of money. I was good looking. I was well equipped. You're being punished <laughs> for it uh, now. <laughs> God is Silence punishing you now. <laughs> and, uh, we, 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 we did it, we, we were on the Al Capri, and, and we only met Gracie Fields once, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Gracie Fields runs as a... Oh, 
I've nothing, this nice woman, but uh, I'll never forget one particular incident, which I, I have a very bad, evil sense of humour. I went to see a thing called Sing As We Go in, in, a, in, a, in a military cinema in Naples, and it was on the eve of about half an hour before uh, Vesuvius blew its top for the first time since the eruption at Herculaneum. I was sitting in the front row, and suddenly Gracie Fields was all these workers with spanners and soldiers started a march towards the screen. As soon as we go along the hot highway, oh, it must have been a very, they get marching forward towards the screen and suddenly Vesuvius blew its top. The whole thing went like this. Everybody screamed and started to run out. They're all screaming about the exits. When I, I sat there, I wasn't, I wasn't very frightened actually. And then I watched this and it looked as if they were all trying to get away from this woman on the screen coming towards them. They were all trying to escape from Gracie Fields. I mean, Happiest time of your life? Oh, um, I suppose uh, playing a good jazz chorus in a band with a hip crowd. That yeah. was about it, the best man. And, and you were doing a lot of, I mean, that was basically volume six. You've stopped, or you're still a soldier, but basically it's touring Italy, Austria, playing jazz. Oh, that's great. That's a, you know, Miles knows the effect of it. It's not, there's nothing quite like it. Mm -hmm. It is the most innocent pursuit. No evil thoughts come upon you, or political or otherwise. If Hitler had played the trumpet, there would have never been a war. I know. I don't know. He might have played the trumpet and had a war. He's that, that evil. <laughs> a different kind of war. Yeah. I was Paul. thinking what happened to Mulgrew because I, th I thought he said some of the wittiest things in the book. For well, example, Mulgrew. when the the guerrillas are copulating and the male guerrillas are beating up the. The, the gorilla on top, and he says, my God, I hope I never want it so much. He <laughs> <laughs> was at the zoo in Rome, I never forget it. I'm what like, happened to him? I mean, see this male banging away with this female, another guy hitting him from behind, <laughs> and he wouldn't stop, though. He was going on banging away and trying to fight this guy off at the same time. Oh, there's courage for you, man. The real courage. Yeah. No, Johnny died. And, well, he, they buried him, so I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, I presume that's the final. Jump yeah. to that conclusion. Yeah. Right, OK. Spike, thanks a lot. Another great volume to add to the memoirs, Goodbye Soldier, is published by Michael Joseph. I think that the Big Red Book was the very first of the genre. Monty Python produced a book which depended in part on being familiar with the television series. The format was rather like a comedy show with skit following skit. That was some 15 years ago. Now every comedy show has a book and often they're much more profitable than the shows themselves. Tonight we've selected a few of the... Russell Nicholson, the infamous spy, is now halfway to paradise or northern Bulgaria. What is Pancakes. the secret then? Well, I use my old school book recipe, right, from ages ago.